Okay. You know, when you don't go live within the first few minutes, you say you're going to go live. Okay, I'm ready. I'm back. Oh. Ready. Oh, I need to change this. Part three. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nadino, and you are here in the Let's Paint and Draw Along. Uh, Don's grabbing his coffee, and we're going to be jumping right into part three, part three of the painting a Pocono landscape with acrylics, or if you have tempura. This is where I am right now, and... Um, I, I tell you, it was all inspired by a trip. I took some time off, went up to the Poconos. And like a lot of people, I grab my phone and I start taking pictures. And then these pictures stay on here. They stay on your phone. Maybe you go back and you look, oh, that was a fun trip, you know. Yeah. But there was one scene when I was just sitting, I was relaxing, I had my coffee, and I was like, John tells you to, to, to observe the things around you. And so I was observing the water. I was observing the leaves and the branches on the trees and the, and the ground and the way the sun was coming through the trees and uh, the houses, the two houses that you could see in the background. One was kind of like a grayish, I don't know. And the other one was red, reddish orange. And, and, I, and then the question came up, how would I recreate this? How could I? And I, then I felt overwhelmed. Like, but I just kept doing it anyway. And then my big mouth said something to Don. And Don said, we're going to make that a class. Yes, and it I, is. And here we are. And I'm telling you, a lot of times we do the class, right? And, you know, in two hours may not be enough time for a lot of people. It definitely isn't enough time for me to finish anything. I'm not at that stage in my craft. Mm -hmm. But this time we did it, we're doing it in a three-parter. Right. So if you haven't seen the first one, don't worry. Watch what we're doing and then go back, watch the first one, follow along, go to the second one, follow along, go to the third one, follow along. And you're going to see just the suggestion that Don is giving us about approaching painting a landscape from a photo. So that's why we're here, y'all. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad Miss Paulette, she's join us, joining us again today. She's going to be, she's got another, I want to say homework assignment, but life assignment. She's going to be leaving us, but it's for a good reason. She's going to an event and we're going to save it as a surprise, but she's going to be capturing some images, thinking about texture, thinking about lighting, thinking about movement, thinking about the things that are happening where she's going. And she's going to share that with us later. And that could perhaps be something that we're all painting together. And it's going to be so much fun. So with that, Don is with us. He grabbed his coffee, and then we're going to jump right into painting. So, Don, why don't you take it away? Oh, yeah, like as always, what's up, everybody, and what's the word? How are we doing this morning, Miss Paulette? I'm going to can't see you. Say again? Can't see you. Yeah, he no, you won't see me today. You won't see me today because of our setup issues that I've had. Uh, due to, to uh, how would you say, streaming issues. But oh, our okay. one issue is always good. You're going to see the overhead when I do the overhead. So okay. now you're going to hear my voice, like I'm like this angelic voice that you're hearing from the heavens or something. Yeah. Or like a DJ or something for like the movies, The Warriors or something. Hey, Mr. DJ. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Warriors, we hope you make it home on time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, listen, look, everything that Nadine was saying about taking photographs is, is great. Also, what you want to know, everybody and Miss Paulette and Nadine included, including myself, because I go out and I take photographs all the time, unpronounced to people. Yeah, sometimes you 
you got to understand what these processes are, was mainly used for or made for. Like, think about it, drawing. Drawing wasn't made to be, how would you say, a finished product that you just would buy. You would use drawing to get someplace. You would either do drawing to document something. You would either do drawing to do etchings. You would either do drawings to understand and explore. Mm -hmm. You see? So then, like, if you was to go outside and do a landscape like how we're doing, you would do a couple of small drawings with a little bit of splashes of watercolor because it's quick and immediate. Not because you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to do this beautiful painting in this first hour. No, you're not even supposed to even be thinking about that like that, you see? So then that's why now is, is really perfect because you have all these devices that take pictures. And then you can store them like nobody's business. I mean, you could take pictures until your heart falls out and your fingers explode and cramp. Yep. So then this way to add on to what she was saying, start thinking categories, everybody when you're taking photographs for yourself, not for everybody else, for you. Like if you like apples, take pictures of apples. Anything you like, dogs, cats, you know, people sitting, people standing, you know what I mean? Take pictures. Mm -hmm. So then this way you can have your own catalog of different types of pictures so that when you do have a dilemma, like I don't have an idea, like how Nadine was explaining to you, she took these pictures, the way she took the pictures, and then she said, I'm glad she had an open mouth this time. <laughs> and she brought the photograph out and said, hey, Don, how would I paint this? I said, oh, that's a class. She said, oh, man. I said, yep, yep, you did it, not me. <laughs> so if you really look at it, everybody, it is in three parts, like how she was saying. Three parts because, yes, sometimes you're not going to do something in just one two-hour set. You know, you'll get good enough to do that. I can do that. So most people can. But you have to build yourself up. That's where that line, perfection is a lie. Repetition is the truth. The back end of that is what you want to work on. Repetition. Having the, 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 the audacity or the, the mind state to want to always do it, whether you're doing it with your hand or not. That means that you can do it with your eyes. And all that. You can be looking around your room and all of a sudden, like our Nadine says, she had a moment. Coffee was on the table. She's looking through. She's having a human moment. Like, oh, man, I like that pop. That's where this stuff comes from. At that point, you're like a photojournalist for your own life. Mm -hmm. So you're just journaling everything around you because who knows? One day you may take a picture and you look at it like, you know what? I'm going to paint that one and bunk Don. I don't, I'm not going to use Don on this one. I'm going to do it myself. You know, and then you're going to show it. And you're going to be like, oh, man, wow. And I'm going to be like, Miss Paulette just shut me up. Let me go back to what I was doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So with that being said, is it okay if I share my screen, AD? Absolutely. All right. Let's go for it. Now it's acting. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Screen. Uh, uh, All right. All right, can you see me? See the screen now? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's blow it up. There we go. So that's our painting right now, everybody. You see? Yep. Got the light on the little something, something. Lighting's good, everybody. Not too dark, right? Not too dark. Okay, cool. All right, so you can see where we're at. Now, if I open up the photograph, let's get the photograph out. Give me a second, everybody. I have the photograph here too as well. Let's reduce this down here. Let's go. Slow. Oh, here we go. Back in there. And now, feel free to open up with no issues. I didn't check that. Ah, there it is. We are okay, ladies. Here's the photograph. See it, ladies? Yes. All right. Now I blew it up. Now you really can see it. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is where we at, everybody. So now look, if you look at our our rendition thus far, we have all the overlay over top of that shoreline on the opposite side there from us. Mm -hmm. You see, so you notice now how we work from 
the background to fill in and worked our way to our foreground towards us in the cup. You see, that will be moving towards the foreground. So now what's going to happen is we have to go in and do what I, what most artists call surface quality and what most laymen or lay persons call, uh, how would you say, uh, detail. We're at that point now where if you're okay with this area up above the banister, now we come in and we reestablish the banister now. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we come in and we look at all the smaller stuff in the grain of the wood and things like this, the shadows, to be able to bring that out even more to make you believe that it's wood. See how on a tabletop already I got this look of how the black table looks? It's yeah. black, but it looks like it has that bluish color over top. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're going to do what we call a dry brush over that, ladies. Okay, so if you have that black part of your table, don't worry if you don't. I can go over some of it and then show you how to do that again. So if you do you have all your colors out yet, ladies? Do I need to go through that with us or do I just need to just go ahead on and put the colors out and get started? Uh, I think you should uh, go through it with us. Okay, cool. Let's go through it again. All right because most people may not got it, okay? Right. So then look, we have a cadmium red or you can have a bright red, you see? You put that out. You can have a primary red if you want to. You can have a lizard and crimson, but that's the darker type, okay? Everybody? So that's like a cadmium orange there. I mean, excuse me, that's like a, a red orange type of ordeal there. Now we have, uh, you can have cadmium yellow light. Or you can have lemon yellow. Okay. Or you can have basic yellow. Or you're going to have another one called what they call chrome yellow. On our blues, you see, because we're starting off with a limited palette idea, with our blues, you can have ultramaranium blue if you want. Or what I like to use, my all-time favorite, which is phthalo blue. Now, it doesn't matter what acrylics you have. You can blend acrylics together brand to brand across the market. You know, when you're first starting. When you get a little bit more efficient and proficient and you want to work for certain means, then that's when you start investing into these some of these higher-end uh, uh, companies that are reassuring you that you have enough pigmentation in it to excite any eye that looks at it, you see? So I would suggest always to go, if you're a beginner, go with the store brand, uh, go with the uh, student brand before you mess with the expense of messing with uh, expensive uh, uh, pigments because you absolutely wanna have an understanding. Here's a titanium white. Another one is zinc white too as well, everybody, which sometimes they call covering white sometimes because it's really opaque. You see, so, so far that's our limited palette idea thus far. Then we have to have our black on there. So like I told y'all guys before, I have what they call a mixture that you do, which I learned from being around illustrators and things like that. Whereas you can take the Mars black and the ivory black and you put it together. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a real even uh, black that won't turn certain colors green or it won't be too warm or too cool. Because the ivory is the warm one. Mars is the cool black. So when you mix them together, they kind of like do a, a, a quasi cancel out. You see, just to let you know. Certain colors, when they mix together, ladies, uh, certain things happen unpronounced to you is just because of what the pigments are and things like this, you see? So we have that basic idea out there thus far. What was the other one that I talked about, ladies? I talked about the cadmium orange. Let's see where that's at. I'm sorry, everybody. No, that's the red again. I need that orange. A lot of times you want that orange. It helps to boost things up moves things a little bit faster. Don't forget your paper towels, everybody, too, as well. Got your paper towels, ladies? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, say, for instance, if you have a green, 
Does everybody have a green? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you want to pull that out too then. And then don't forget about that dioxide violet. Now, if you know that, that you're not going to be working very long, I wouldn't put a lot of it out, Miss Paulette. Okay. And that's for everybody. If you know that you're not going to be working very long, don't put a lot of material out because you will waste it. Another way of saving it, if you have jars opposed to tubes, you can scoop up the unused paint and put it back in the tube. Let me put it back in the jar. With the tubes, unfortunately, they haven't made them uh, such to be able to, to be refillable with most of these tubes. So then what you would have to have is a vessel that you can put it in, something like a little uh, serving cup and things like this that you get from the restaurants and things. Mm -hmm. You can use those or what you can use, um, you can go to the dollar store, you can use uh, shrink wrap or cling wrap as they call it. And if you already have a palette, you can put a, a wet paper towel. And then after you put the wet paper towel, uh, you put the shrink wrap or cling wrap around it and you put it on the bottom of your refrigerator. That'll hold for a long time. You don't want it to freeze. Hey, if Dom. Freezes, yes? You know what I've been using? What's that? And, and, and it'll tell you, age me. I've been using, uh, recycling my, um, the containers that the pills come in from the doctor. Yeah, there you go. That's what you want to use. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Those. Yep. A lot of people, when they come to my classes, the elder centers, that's yeah. what we use there because they have an excess of those medicine bottles. Yep. So if you're one of those people that have an excess of those medicine bottles, then yeah, great, great. Glad you brought that up, Nadine. Yeah, you can use those too. And any vessel that you can close, that's right. what you want. That's a good idea. Now, what I did, I did what you did, what you said, uh, Don. I knew since I had the colors on the palette and I didn't want to rinse them off, I just put something over top of them. And there you go. <laughs> you know, yeah, next time just wet. You don't want to saturate it, but just wet it, a paper uh -huh. towel, and put that over top next time and then put the, the clean wrap over top of all of that. And okay. then that'll keep the paint even longer. Now, so that's okay. why you don't uh, say again, Nadine. Should you put it in the refrigerator? Yes, at the bottom of your refrigerator where your produce will be or, or on top of that last drawer before you get to your produce drawers. Gotcha. Because th those are the one, those are the areas that is that's like not it's 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 reasonable now in most of these newer refrigerators because it's climate controlled and they know now that that bottom is the place where you want the produce and that it doesn't get too cold there. So, because you don't want it to freeze, because if it freezes, that's like drying it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't want to put them in the freezer. That's what you don't want to do. But you do want to put them on the bottom shelves of your refrigerator. Okay. Then, if you can, in the long run, like what I do sometimes, you get a whole, you know, get one of those dorm used dorm refrigerators, mm -hmm. and then you can put your paint in there. You know, get one of those dorm refrigerators with the enclosed little freezer that's up in the corner. Then this way that won't freeze your paints when you put it on the bottom of the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have our colors out. You see, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to scoop out. Remember, I have this old uh, uh, cadmium orange here. Old, but since I kept it good, kept the, the, the lid tight and clean. You see that, everybody? Mm -hmm. It's real good that when you use these jars, clean it off and then clean off the cap too as well. So then this way, what happens is you're able to keep that seal tight so no air gets inside the jar with your acrylic, especially if you bought the expensive acrylics. Like I do sometimes, you're painting like $100 to $200 for a larger container. You don't want that container to dry out. So you got to start understanding how to take care of your your equipment. It's just like if you was a contractor or something, you wouldn't want rusty saws and, and you know, malfunctioning, you know, portable tools to do a job. So you have to take care of your equipment, the knives, all that good stuff, wipe them off, you know. Yeah. This is one that I had since college, you know. Uh, here's another two or three that I've had, you know, since high school and college. Wow. You see, so if you take care of your equipment, they'll take care of you. Always. That's always the philosophy. That's why I be sounding that way sometimes when I'm looking at someone you paint and the water situation and the and the brush, and I'll be like, oh my God. Oh. You know, it's because I'm looking at how you're handling your supplies and like, oh, ah, 
ah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, you know, so just know that if you hear those noises, all right? So now let's look at it. Is everybody, do I have any questions? Nadine, anybody, even online, any questions? Because we're, I'm not going to go back up in here not unless you guys tell me you're not done and you need to understand something up in here. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the Facebook feed. I'm not really seeing any activity, uh, any questions going on yet. I will right. mm -hmm. let you know if someone asks a question. All right, but how about yourself? Um, Are you done with this area up above the banister? This area yeah. right here? I guess I can be. No, do you feel as if you are? See, I'm not uh, there in the room with you. See, if I was in a room with you, I would say, okay. I if it was a private, private class, I would say, okay, zoom in on your picture. Let me look at it. Okay, let's look at highlights in your shadow areas. Right. You see? Because that's what would make certain things like on the trees itself. I would right. put darker highlights of what would look like. Um, you see here in this area here where my uh -huh. finger is? Let yeah. me zoom in on that a little bit. Oh, that's zoomed out. See that lighter area there? Yeah. But notice how it's not lighter than what's on the outside of it. This is okay. a, a bark embellishment to okay. show you the light under the underbrush. Okay. You see, so then what you would do is you would mix up some of your darker color or a brown, right? Mm -hmm. Take that brown and just put a little bit of yellow green or yellow and a touch of white. And that would serve as lighter highlights for underneath in your shadow area. You can okay. make them bluish too as well. If you look in the photograph, let's see, let me go to the photograph on our screen over here. And you see in the photograph, you see in these areas here? Yeah, it's kind of that. blue. Yeah, there you go. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And you see this area in here before it starts pixelating? See mm -hmm. these lighter pixels in here, those blues? Mm -hmm. All that is is the reflection of the atmosphere into your shadow area. And all shadows, you know, they have uh, reflections or depictions of blue within them, no matter what the color is. Mm -hmm. Now, for what reason that is, I don't necessarily know right away that would take too long to start talking about. But mm -hmm. just know that to get the atmosphere feel in your piece, like the Impressionist did, you start adding blues in your shadow areas. Okay, you got that, ladies? Yeah. So I'll mix up that color so you can see it. Let's do that together then. All right, let's back this up. Well, no, yeah, yeah. What I'll do is I'll slide this over and I'll work in this area right here. All right, I'm gonna use my palette knife to mix because I'm on that piece of glass like I was saying, okay? So now look, oh, and another color, if you don't have brown. If you have brown, put it out. If you don't have brown, you can mix brown by taking the dioxide violet. You see, I took the dioxide violet, a touch of yellow, because they're opposites. And then that's going to cancel each other out. You're going to get this brownish color. Okay. You see that? What I have on my palette, it looks kind of mm -hmm. thin right now, but I'm using the palette knife. What you want to do if you use a palette knife, you want to scoop. And then you want to spread it, and that's how you would mix it. You see, and you see how that looks brown, right? Then how I would take it. Yes. What color will you use again? Those two colors. Yeah, I, I would, would use if you if you have dioxide violet or violet or purple. Okay, yeah, and then you would take your yellow because they're opposites. The okay. way you can get a nice brown is you can put opposites together, and they'll make a brown. Okay, another opposite that I can show you since we showed that. Uh, you guys can keep going with filling in in your area if you want, but then just listen to this. Like, look, I can take that orange that I have up here mm -hmm. and I'll put it right here. You see that orange? And then I'll take the, the phthalo blue and put with that. See how it went brown? Orange and phthalo blue. Okay, got it. Yeah, orange or even the ultramarine blue. Mm -hmm. Blue and orange are opposites. They're going to cancel each other out and you're going to get this mesmerizing looking brown that you can manipulate with. You see that you guys on the palette there? Mm -hmm. Notice how it's a little bit different from the violet and the yellow mixture. Now what's another one, another basic one? Red and green, you guys. Mm -hmm. Red, and, Red green. and green, yeah. Red and green are opposites, okay. Now I take that idea and show you. 
So I take a little bit of red. You see, I'll put it up. Yep, all right, you still see it. If I put it here, I'll put it right there. You see? Yeah. And notice what I'm doing. I got the paper towel with my knife, and I'm just wiping my knife off on the paper towel like so. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's another way of working. Now I take the green, you see? Yeah. And put it with the red, mix it, and then look what happens. It turns brown. You have like a reddish brown. Mm. Exactly. It's really like a warm brown, you see? So yeah. you just showed us three different ways to make brown. Yes, indeed. That's what we did. You wow. see, and you have to have a thorough mixture now, ladies. Even if it's with your brush, you want to flip your brush over into it, just like how I'm doing my knife. If you can scrape it up, scrape it all into one, you know, on the knife, right? Then you lay it back down mm -hmm. and then you mix it with the back side or the bottom side of your knife. You see, mm -hmm. if you're doing it with your brush, you always want to flip your brush in it. When you're doing a mixture and you don't want to spread it out, you want to try to keep it in a controlled area on your palate. And you see that brown I just made? Mm -hmm. That's like a Windsor brown. So you see the three different types of browns you can make? What happens if I add white to a little bit? If I add white to a little bit of it here, you see, I take a little bit of white, put it with it here. Uh -huh. Look at that 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 uh, tint of uh, brown that we just made with that. You see, see how cool that wow. is. Yeah. And these are some of the colors. Like, say, for instance, if you wanted to use that color and you didn't want it that bright, okay, I wouldn't put uh, black in it to bring it down. I would put more of the color into it. Maybe I would scoop half of this off, you see, and then put another scoop of that so I could still have some of my other reserve left. And see how I went a little bit darker in value? Mm -hmm. You see? And now something like that I would use in this area of the painting in here. You see? Because it won't compete with, the, with what's going on on the outside of it. I can even put it in with the knife and it'll make it look textual, you see? Mm -hmm. I forget what the name of this one is, but this knife is some of my favorite knives because it's flat on the end. The other ones are rounded on the end. Mm. And you see how I just dropped that in there off the back of the knife? Oh, yeah. And it looks and it becomes textual. And, you know, to tell you the truth, the college professors didn't teach me a lot in using that knife. Who taught me a life a, a lot about using a knife, and everybody laughs when I say it, but it makes sense. Bob Ross and 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 and, and uh, uh, Bill Alexander, really, the TV guys, yeah, because they yeah. would use a knife a lot. They would explain what the knives were used for, and then they would show you different simple techniques that you can take on your own, like how I'm doing with you guys, and you go with it if you're really adventurous and you're really a true creative spirit, you're just gonna take the simplistic idea that I'm giving you, which is a suggestion that everybody uses, but you make it your own. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody misunderstands. It's not that I'm in a competition with anybody, I'm in a competition with myself. How can mm -hmm. I control this knife to get the results that my mind is thinking of? How can I make this hand and whatever in it move so I can get this scene to do what I needed to do so you as a human being react? Right. And call me a genius or call me a god. Whatever you're going to call me to say that I did this effectively. <laughs> mm. <laughs> to get your attention. All right. So do we understand those browns? Because it's going to be the same way to make that banister. If you don't yeah. have yellow ochre, right? Or yellow oxide. These are the darker yellows. You see, they look like mustard. Uh -huh. Okay, this is where I would take yellow. Where we at? Uh, yeah, right here. I would take yellow, you know, take a double scoop of yellow, right? Because mm -hmm. look at that banister in the picture. You'll notice that it's light, but it's like a mustard color. Would you agree or disagree? I Let's agree. battle there. Yeah. Miss uh Miss Paulette, what do you think? Does that wood in the picture? Are you I, seeing the picture or do we need to bring the picture up for you? Oh no, no, it's perfect. I mean, it's good. Yeah. No, no, I we're do. talking about the photograph, this one here. You see, look at the screen. Uh-huh. The banister oh, yeah. here. Yeah, you we're see gonna mix that color there. We're gonna mix that color there for the banister. 
And it's, would you agree it looks like a mustard color because it's in a shadow area or no? What color are you seeing? I agree that it does, you know, in a uh, kind of like a mustard color. Yeah. See, notice how I said it. I didn't say dark brown, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or dark sand, because that may make you want to put black in it right away. Mm -hmm. My thing is to make it feel natural. Stay away from black as long as you can. Then if you have no other choice to deepen that color to make a shade by mixing with black, then don't let black be the only color sitting by itself. It should mm -hmm. always have a color in it, whether it be warm or cool. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then let's finish making that, that color. Then let me show y'all guys how we're going to make that color. It's like a mustard color we're making, you guys. You know, and then if the colors on the on the screen are not matching up for you and your device and things like that, just know when you look at your palette and if you use the colors that we talked about, you're going to yield these same results no matter what the company is. Okay, everyone? All right. All right. Now, look, I'm just going to use a little bit of violet in this, just a little bit at a time. See how we did that? And then now we mix that. I'm mm -hmm. looking for a certain vibration before I even start manipulating. See how I went to that nice mustard color? Yeah. See that, everybody? See that, Miss Paulette? Uh-huh. Yeah. Look at that. So then that's what you want to try to get to, a mustardy type of color. All right. Now, what I would do now is take a touch of white, move over with some of this. I don't want to use all of it. I just use some of it and then mix that little bit there and then see how that color is changing now. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much close to that color of the wood. Now, for people that are real meticulous or they, their mind state is really like that, they really, you know, have to have this over impulse of being absolutely correct and perfect and all of this. This is where you can beat yourself up with the color. Okay. You know, this is where you can do that with no problem. My thing would be if you look at the photograph, though, you can see that 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 light is not as bright in value as the cup. The cup would probably be the brightest thing, including the background where the house is, that one white house that you call gray. Mm -hmm. You notice it makes like a triangle type of type of feel. Yeah. If you look at the hand, where I'm moving the hand across yep. the screen, it's there and there, and then this bright area over here. So it formulates like a quasi-triangle for composition. That's why you really was intrigued by it too, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's just a natural thing for human beings to do. So great pick once again. So okay. in this area in here, this is where you can use some of that color that we just made. So let's look in here and see how we're going to apply that. All right. Let me, uh, I'm just going to have to get paint on the back of it then. So I'm going to start here so you can see it here. How are you seeing my board, everybody? Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay, cool. Is Paulette, you still good? Oh, uh, I'm, we're seeing the top right-hand corner. Yeah, yeah, for right now until I, I move just that paint sure. over. Yeah, I no, we good, sure. yeah, we good. So now what we're going to do now is I'm going to use my flat brush. You see that, everybody? The medium-sized one, not the big one. Uh -huh. If you don't have this in just yet, then you want to use your bigger one, like I have showed you guys, whether it be this one here, or whether it be bigger than the other one here. You see all three sizes here, you see? Right. So either which one of these would do, I would use this one here, the, the smallest one out of them. Not a micro size, but at least like about an eight size brush. Wet my brush always, remember that. Wet your brush first, ladies, always. Yep, and then now I go into the paint here. I load up both sides of the brush here. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And then now I come, see how my trees are overlapping the banister? This is why I was telling you guys to overlap, because now when you come back, watch what happens. You get a cleaner interpretation now. Oh. Now I see, now you see mine, it's a little bit too light, you see? Yeah. So then yeah. now what I do is to dull it down, I can take some of that brown that I made and put in that color. Okay. You see, you don't want just to let the color die out. You know, any color that you mix, even just for practice, 
You know what I mean? You want to be able to use it again? Just use it. You see, yeah, now that dulls down pretty good. So now I can even do that on the banister part on the supports on the bottom. You see that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then now I want to let some of the darker brown that's underneath come through. So if oh. you notice, you see what I'm doing? It's like a dry brush idea that I'm doing. Oh, okay. You okay. see, I'm letting all the excess come off the brush and just letting it trail along. When I come to the top again and come back, I reload the brush. And now I want to have a nice crisp line up here. I come in with the flat end of my brush. See that, ladies? Yeah. And it gets a nice clean edge. It overlaps back over because why? Visually speaking, that's how we're seeing that, maybe. You took that picture and the banister was overlapping the trees and we can go for the overlap of how everything was overlapping. You see yeah. that clean line now? Now, doesn't yeah. that feel like those trees are behind that banister now? Yeah. You see, this is another reason why I always say work from your background coming forward. All the great ones done it. Thomas Eakins, you know, uh, uh, E.S. Esser. You name off all the artists you enjoy, even Van Gogh, the abstract artist, Picasso. All of them have worked in this way of overlap to portray the idea of space for human beings. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say that's a Da Vinci code secret, you can go with that then. You can say it's a code secret. But it's a code that you get to know real fast at any age. And you notice how I'm doing that, right? You see how I'm using the flat side of the brush. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming in, you know, wet your brush every now and then. Remember, spray your stuff, especially if you like how I am right now. You got a fan going because the fan blowing in your direction. What happens is it starts to blow onto uh, your palette. And if it's acrylic paint, it's going to start drying out even faster because it's 70 degrees in your space or higher. Okay, do we understand that, ladies? Yeah. So always just be mindful of the conditions in your environment. So then that way that'll help you control your paint. Otherwise, you have to come in with your water bottle and do like how I'm doing. Just spritz just a little bit. You're not trying to make it saturate. You just spritz. A nice little spritz. If you have a small spritz bottle that they use in the, uh, the beauty salons, that's perfect. It just puts out a nice little puff of a mist of water. You want to do that. And then keep on going. Because that'll keep it moist for an extra amount of time. You see that? Look. Yep, got it. There you go, Miss Paulette. And that's even with that loose liquid paint, too, as well. Mm -hmm. You see, now you want to go all the way across. So you might see me cut off the screen in a minute because I'm only got the, the upper uh, right hand corner going. But that's okay. You're going to use the same technique. Look, come in between it and do some lines. Because if you look at the picture, you'll see that that's wood in there. So sometimes wood, you don't have to try to control the lines. You can if you're narcissistic like that and you have to be right and wrong. Right. And it has to be perfect, then okay, you go for it. This is where you beat yourself up. But if you're like me and the rest of the squad that's on here and love painting and keeping it going with stress-free, uh, use your subjective mind in there. Just let it go, random. We can come back and overlap it again. You see, notice how I start blabbing my gums now to talk. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have your blow dryer out, which I have, hold on. I didn't want to make anybody feel bad. I know how sometimes Nadine feels some type of way that she'll jump up and go get it. Like, oh, my God, I got know where it's at. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so here's my, my old Videl Sasson, the BS on there. You see it. Mm -hmm. And now all you do, you can turn it on air, turn it on low. You just over top of it, at least a good eight inches over top of it. And you blow dry the area where you was just working. You'll be, you, you'll be shocked to know that just that little bit of air helped direct air, helped your piece to dry faster. Then you come back again and you want that to be gone. Now look at how it's working out now, ladies. You see that? Mm -hmm. See how I get rid of most of those things now? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times, this is where you can put the black in there, too, because black is opaque, too. You see? So notice how I'm leaving spaces, but at the edge, at the edge of the banister, that's where I'm trying to make sure and be mindful that I have a crisp line. 
because I know I'm not going back into that background no more. It's all about forward elements now. You know? And that's all we're doing. You know, overlap, overlap. Then what you can do to get this bottom edge, you can turn it upside down if you want to. So then that you have that same feeling like how you had working from the top down, turn it around and you can work the same way. If I turn it around now, I'm gonna have to move the camera over. But mm -hmm. you get the idea, right, you guys? Yes. Okay. That's all that's important. Me, myself, I'm going to just hold my brush in the opposite direction. See, once you get pretty much confident, you can do movements like this on the surface. But it's all about building up your confidence, you see? The other one is we have to make sure we understand where our banister uh, supports are. You see? So if you wanted to hold off about putting that line across the, the, um, the, the bottom edge, you can work on your banister supports real quick. You see, and it's the same colors. Mm -hmm. Just take that brown that I made, put it in that color to make bring it a little bit deeper. You know, add a touch of water to it. Flip my brush over in it. You see that? Mm -hmm. Flip your brush, flip your brush. So it's one color that you're seeing. You're not seeing two colors and a little bit of white and whatever else you're mixing. You're only seeing one color. That's all you want to see. And then now I'm looking at the banister. So I would start the banister the same way. You see? I can do it the same way. I want that banister to stand out. It's going to be a little bit darker underneath the banister right here. Bang. You see a little bit darker on the upper parts, and then it may get a little bit lighter on the bottom part. Just a little bit, not a whole bunch. You see, just those small little differences in light value brings more interest to the piece. Because now people are looking and be like, wow, you, it looks really like you had a lot of light going on. It's that and the third, and look at how I'm doing it. Then, but I'm letting that dark spot now, not the tree that's on the outside, the banister. Hey, Donna can't see the bottom part where you're applying. Oh, okay. Move over, let's shift it this way. Ah, uh, nah. All right, hold on. Let's blow it up, let's pull it out, pull it back. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. All right, a little bit better. This yeah. part down here now. Yeah, yeah, you can see me now. I'll move it up just a little bit and angle it. This area right in here, ladies, you use your lightest dark interpretation on the bottom side of the banisters, you see? You'll see here, this is a banister. Mm -hmm. That's a tree on the outside. You see, the tree has to be darker. Right. See, and then now I come back with the darker color underneath of the banister right here. But no, it's, it's made of the same material. Mm -hmm. You see, so then all I do is just put strokes over top. That darker color, clean it up on the sides if you want that line to be real clean. You know, a lot of times I like the whimsical, but that's what people like, you know? People really like the little small mishaps. I had a lady tell me one time that brought one of my pieces. She said, I love your pieces because it seems like you're so loose and free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then there, yeah, I, I, let, I let people know I don't really worry about what the world is thinking when I'm doing the piece. You're not supposed to. Don't worry about what your audience is going to say when you're trying to get the piece down. You know, get the piece down, then worry about all of that. You see? Here, you see? That darker color here, you see, but not as dark as the tree that's in the, that's, that is overlapping. You see that? And it starts feeling like a partition. The same thing to wherever you're saying the banister is and the support is. See, I took the whole flat brush and used that. Bang, right down to the table. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to on the rest of the on the video because uh it's 11 o'clock now okay no problem but you got the general idea yeah i got my table that i was watching you the only thing i want to see on the table the video is how you got those uh 
those colors inside of the table. You know, so I watch. Uh, no problem. I'll go over that since you're saying you're about to leave. I'll go over that in about a good 10 minutes then. And yeah. then so then this way you'll have that information on the video. So then when you come back and look at the video, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's how they did it. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, y'all have a great day. Enjoy. You too. You too, Miss Paulette. You take care. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> Have a ball. All righty. <laughs> yep, because I heard the conversation earlier, Nadine. You said you're not going to give it away. So hopefully uh, I didn't give it away too much. I think you did, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. You see, this is another area too, Nadine, where you can start making tones. Mm -hmm. You can mix a gray in there if you want, you see. Now, a lot of times, if you overwork an area while it's drying, you'll wind up pulling paint up. Right. So then that's why the dry time is important now. See how I'm just going in and doing certain embellishments. Mm -hmm. Taking the lighter color and just letting it mix in, wet in the wet. Mm -hmm. You see? And once you do that, you're going to get a certain effect. That's just the way it works. Just the way it works. Do your other banisters the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, I come over in here and cover a little bit. Then I come back because that comes right down to where the cup is, you see. And then now I would take the darker color and just mix it in wet in the wet with it just a little bit more. Let it dry. If it's not dark enough, once I dry it, then I come back and hit it again. Mm -hmm. See, I do the same thing with the other banister or the banister support, you see. Just to make sure all my banisters are there and it's not trees. Because a lot of times you can confuse yourself. Yeah. You, you'll look at what's a banister and you might think it's a tree. So you won't color it in and then it'll look funny to you, you know what I mean? You're like, oh man, I forgot that. Yeah, then all you can do is say, that's my abstract piece. That's my uh, surrealist movement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a Dadaist at that time. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You see, and now you just play with it. Play with it. How's the darkness look to you? All I would say is make it darker at the top than it is at the bottom with the way shadows come over the way light descends and casts itself on things okay. through a tree. You see, it's going to be lighter at the bottom right in this area here. See that in there? And I'm just letting the brush, I'm using what residue is on the brush. If you look at the picture, you'll see the idea. Some people, they wanna be absolutely rock hard on top of, how would you say, the absolute of the color. My thing mm -hmm. when we're doing sessions like this, Nadine, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get you to get into a loose idea of the neighborhood of looking for colors. Mm -hmm. then once you get that then you should beat yourself up but before that point you should just be able to start looking at things and photographs and saying to yourself how can i mix that color mm -hmm. you know that's the mixology game that i was playing in, in some of the other videos maybe we'll just have a game where we do that where we just i'll just have some color swatches we'll put them on the screen and now we'll say go mix mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then we'll have to have a mix off like that mix -off. all right yeah, that's what that is, is a mix-off. I used to do it in school with my friends. They, we used to love doing it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, got a couple of professors hooked on it. They use it in their color classes, some of them. You know what I mean? But it's just a fun way of getting somebody to see how to see color. That's all it is. How do I see the color? How do I mix the color that I'm seeing, that I'm having the experience with? You see how you can use that brush just to go straight across the whole thing and get a nice crisp line. Mm -hmm. You see it? And now you got it. There you go. Yes, indeed. All right. Yeah. All right. There you go. See, now you're just trying to make the 
the paint thicker. So what you would do is you would add the white to fatten it up. And then now you would add that mixture that we talked about, more the violet, more the yellow, to mix it together to get that color. You see to come back, so it takes the tint down, the idea of the tint down, and then it brings the color back that you want it thicker. Now, the, the other way that you can make things thicker is by being, buying full body paint. And it'll say it on the, um, on the label. It is a full body. Full body meaning that it's so lean or so, uh, how would you say, it has so many pigments in it that it has a nice coverage power. That mm -hmm. means that when you use it to overlay other colors, you won't be able to see the underneath through it. Mm -hmm. See, with most of your hues and things that you'll have, the hues are thin colors. So with a hue, you can use a hue to, how would you say, color, how would you say white, or make beautiful tints and shades as a base to paint with. And then use other colors to fuse. So you see how I'm using it? Look at that. Nice mm -hmm. clean line. But you use, you use your flat brush to cover those areas. This is where you're almost like a house painter now, you see? Mm -hmm. And notice how I'm blending in those darker tones that I put in earlier. You just run your brush over top and let it just drag over top. That's a dry brush idea. That'll give you texture mm -hmm. when you don't think you when you think you need something else to make texture. You see, come in with the darker color now. You see how I did that? And then yeah. just let the brush do it for you. Darker color. And then just drag it through the wet paint, like how I'm doing, you see? That's mm -hmm. going to give you a nice texture of wood, idea of the texture of wood. It's not going to be exactly what you're seeing. Now, if you want it to be absolutely exact to what you're seeing, maybe, then that's when you come back and you blow up the picture, and now you're doing this photo real idea, where you're trying to see absolutely where each grain is flowing to. I'm using a guesstimated idea, a suggestive idea, more freeing idea to get you to go. See how it's there now? Mm -hmm. You know, and it has some of those flicks of darks and lights in there. Can I go in and then uh, fill in some more of this overlap? Yeah, I come back with the color again and I do the same thing. Violet, put that in there. Touch of yellow, put that in there. You see, small touch of white. Put that in there, mix it all together, and look at that darker color I got. Now you can see where I have still have color on my brush that's separated, still see yellow, violet, and white. Flip mm -hmm. it over, mix it again. Flip it over, mix it again, and now look at my brush. You don't see, all you see is one color. So when you mix in, that will be called a thorough mixture, everybody. Nadine included. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I mean by thorough mix now, Nadine, a pure mixture now. I don't get that confused with um, when you have a pure color. That means a pure color with no interference and no, and no tint tone and shading. Pure colors, like yellow green would be a pure color. Yellow orange would be a pure color. See, look at this here. There. See, knowing what your brushes can do is what really can help you. If you don't start getting to understand how your brushes work, now these are not bristle brushes I have. These are uh, synthetic brushes. Mm -hmm. If I was using a more natural brush, I would use a bristle brush to a stiff. They have them synthetic too as well. You know, and you'll see them in the stores. See that? Yeah. Oh boy, yeah, you see? Now we'll come down and take some of that color and just maybe a little bit of lightness on each one, just a little bit, not a lot. You see, just whatever is on the brush, I drag through the light area on the banister, on the bottom part of the support of the banister and a little bit oh, on the side, you see? See what I'm doing, Nadine? Mm -hmm. 
Now, see, that's not the thickness of the banister in this side. That's the tree. You see, even in here, I would do the same thing, take some of the, the dryness and look at how I'm using it. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to cover it. I'm trying to leave some of that underneath color that we got there there so that it really feels like it's one and the same with the banister over top. It's the same type of wood, same pressure treated wood. And once you do that, it'll have to feel like it's the same wood, but it has to be darker. Why? Because it's underneath the banister, the support of the banister, the actual railing as they call it. See, use some of that again. Notice I'm not trying to cover nothing. I'm trying to just do a dry brush over top. So whereas some of that lightness shows the darkness underneath of it. And then it starts to feel even more like an element that's closer to you than further away from. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit on the cup here above the cup. If your banister is there, you see even come down just a little bit below the cup's edge because you know you're going to put that cup back over top. You see, that's the part that you got to really understanding in this one, how to properly use that overlap to come out of the piece. You know, we drew everything in from front to go into the background, you see? Mm -hmm. Now when you fill in, you notice we blocked in that area. We, well, we blocked in this area, blocked in the foreground, then we, we did the water and then we blocked in the background of the other side of the lake. Then once we got all of that secured and we knew that we was gonna cover this area with darker leaves, we just did looser movements in those areas. Then we came back and we put the tree, well, then we came back and we did the lake. The effects in the lake, the blueness, the darkness on the other side that's showing the reflection of the other side. And then we showed the um, dock it, that's there, you know what I mean? The little at the water's edge. Mm -hmm. Then once we put all of that in, then we started doing some of the shrubbery that was on both sides of the bank. Then that's when we put the darker trees over top. Then that's when we put the banister in over top of that. Then after we do that, we take and we put the banister supports in. You see, notice I didn't say nothing about the cup yet. Then we put the table in, the black table on that angle. And then now, if you want, you can work and stop where you know that cup is going to be, or you can just block in the whole area. And then now you would come back and put the cup movement over top with the mm -hmm. brush. Okay, and then now you have all your final overlaps there. So now you know if you work in a certain area, how you must overlap. If I go, if I put this over the table here that's in the foreground, I know when I come back and paint this in, I gotta paint that black over top. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, once I do it, I know I can't go back to this banister anymore in these areas. So what I'm trying to do is get this banister to look the way I need it to look before I make that movement. Mm -hmm. See, before I make that movement. You see, and you just use the brush. Let the brush do most of the work for you. Put that lighter color in, you know? Maybe a little bit lighter in other areas and others, but not as light as the top of the banister up here. You see what I'm doing down here, Nadine? Uh, yeah. See, so it's a little bit lighter, but not as light as what's going on over top of it. And that's going to give you that little bit of that nuance. Now, could you be a little bit more caring of the placement of it than I am? Eh, I'm starting to rush now because I know the time is running out and I don't want to have to spend another week, four weeks on it. And then everybody be like, oh, it's four weeks or one piece. Well, you know, if you put it all together, it'll be eight hours. That would be one day. Right. You see? So that's how I look at it. Or that's how we look at it over here. You don't look at it as like, oh, man. No, we say, okay, that would have been eight hours if we would have been able to go straight ahead. So now I know mm -hmm. without the instruction, I can go eight hours and then I would get this done mm -hmm. by the end of the day. 
And that's how I suggest people work and move. Don't work with this idea of perfection and all this good stuff. Work with the idea of completing things, you know, finishing a task. You know, that's how you build a series for some of you that have ambitions that want to do shows and stuff, you know, because you might get, you know, bored with what we're doing over here. Then, the, then you might want to explore out on your own, everybody. So then when you explore out on your own, what happens is now you're saying, oh, OK, I'm doing these for a purpose now. I'm doing them to either get into a show or I'm doing them to, to give the family members and friends as gifts. You know what I mean? However, you're going to do that. But you should be just mainly worried about the uh, effect. How did you master the idea? Did you fool everybody? You see what I'm saying? Did you even fool yourself? Did I even fool you on the screen? You see, does it feel like that banister is really like a partition to prevent you from going further? What you think, Nadine? Um, yours is. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. All right. Look, then that's when you can take a little bit of black. Just a little bit, not a lot, because black can really tip the joint up. Now, what I like to do is put like a, a nice shade or, or, or like in certain areas sometimes. Because if you look at certain things in nature, they have shades and most of your darker tones are real small at the edge or real thin at the edge to make you feel like it's about to turn away from you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm doing here with this little gray that I put on the bottom here? Mm -hmm. Let the paint dry too. Drying is very important. Let it dry. You see, and then now we can do things like that. See the bottom edge there, Nadine? Mm -hmm. So you put a little bit of gray with it, and then now it, 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 it how would you say, have a nice thickness on it, and then also it sets itself up to move forward even more. Just remember, tint tones and shades push, push pure colors forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, just try to remember that. Just try to remember that when you paint it. And then look around for it. Because if you can see it, you can replicate it. That's the whole other philosophy. If I can see it, you can replicate it. The problem is seeing it. If you can't see it, wouldn't you agree that's the first issue you got to deal with? You got to be able to see it. Yeah, man. Let's see. And now I feel more comfortable coming back, cleaning up that bottom edge line because I'm not going to go back into my banister. I like the way the banister is looking like that. The only other thing you can do is either add a light side or a dark side. So in this situation with the light coming down through the brush, if we look at our picture, I believe that's a little bit lighter on the inside there to show the thickness of that uh, support beam. See? So yeah, come back in here. I mean, if you notice, I'm not reconstruction, reconstructing areas. I'm moving with a, a, a definite plan and idea on how to finish this piece. See, using the brush for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. That flat brush should give you a nice thin line, you know, and then now you can spread it over top, you know, move it around, and there you have it. We have a nice partition looking fence. You know, I can do some more darknesses up top here and there, you know, just as long as that feels like a piece of wood. You see what I'm doing there? If you look at what I'm doing on the surface there, you can have the same feeling in yours. <laughs> For those of you that, that really want to, you know, show us the differences in different textures and things like that, yeah, you can take a thinner brush and start to really put in those darks the way that you want to. You know what I mean? But because we're in here and we're only doing, you know, two hours, I, mean, I don't have to be photo real or try to fool you to that point. We're being expressionist now. We're expressing the love and the feeling that Nadine had in that picture she took when she was in the Poconos. That relaxing moment where you have a cup of coffee there with you on a table. Yeah. Like, you know, come on. We're hoping that we're giving Nadine flashbacks so she can be like, you know what? I need to go back to the Poconos. Yup. <laughs> you know? 
I need to win a million dollars so I can. Uh, oh man, I wish we could have won that. What that 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 billion dollars or whatever ooh. it was a couple of weeks ago, man. We'd be having so much fun. Fun would be ridiculous. I have everybody on a boat and plane. Yeah, you know what I mean. The whole hundred and sixty-three people. Yep. Let's go. You know what I mean. Wow. In, in, in the Caribbean, painting. Yes, every day. painting every day. Fruits every and day. vegetables every day. Good seafood every day, but we're painting right. and broadcasting. You know what I mean? Painting and broadcasting and swimming, having fun, you know. But I would bring the whole 163 people for at least that one week. That would be so fun. Yeah. Because, you know, you win the building, you got to give them half. You give the government half, and then you like, know. no Isn't problem. It doesn't bother me if I'm making a billion. If I'm making a billion, man, take that. Okay, let's go, you know? <laughs> Right. <laughs> Give me my lump sum and I'm done. You know what I mean? Let me buy a couple of assets. Say, say goodbye. I don't that's need to it. see you anymore. Yep, that's it. I'll tell everybody that's got a studio. I'll pay a one-time fee for everybody's studio to be packed up and watch for them and things like that if they have studios. If not, I'll hire people to come and look at your house. You know what I mean? Make sure yep. your house is good for the week. One time, that's it. You know what I mean? Then that's when we make it a Patreon thing after that. And everybody has to sign up and go for the next year. Yeah. Uh, and you still can have sponsorship. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would do the sponsorship thing. But for those that can, you know, we want to look at them and say, all right, now the first one was on us. Next right. one will be on you. You see, now you just let it dry. You see how I'm just, that's why you start talking. Or you pull your hair dry out. You just start drying it off. You see, now I can go into the table. So now going into the table, let's see here. Ah, okay. I'm gonna have to move over to here. I'm gonna get paint on the back of it. It's okay. All right. So now, man, you know what? That's not okay. Let me <laughs> let me take the palette knife. And be good. See, you scrape off the paint, everybody. This is what you can do when the paint is fresh. If it's if it's not if it's uh, dry to it, then you would use a, a a scraper, or you can use a single edge razor blade. And you see, yeah, you see. So now I can scrape these nice grays off that I got, and now you can just move all that paint over. Or if it's old, like some of this is. You see, I just move it over, move it over, use some of that color there, move all that over. And then I would wipe it off, all of its excess, just wipe it right off on the towel. Done deal. See everybody? Mm -hmm. So, all right, next move. The little black, that, oh man. See now, yeah, right here. This little black edge here now. Now, most of you probably, some people look like they did it straight across. I did it on an angle. If you look at the tabletop in the picture, you'll notice that uh, it's at an angle and then you can actually see that edge of the table, mm -hmm. that, that corner of the table. What I did was I just made it go straight across mm -hmm. so I don't have to deal with the edge of the table. If you want to deal with the edge of the table, you can. Mm -hmm. That's no problem, you know? But what I did, if you're following what I did, no, all I did is take it straight across. So now I would take the black. You see, mix a little bit of white with it, just a little bit, not a lot. That thickens it up. Move that black back in there. You see, flip your brush over. You see how it went dark in one area. You see, now I want that dark there. Not this in here and here. I want this dark that I made right here on the edge of it by putting more black into it and thickened up some more. Now, when that happens, I can come in here, put that brush down and right over top. Bang, look at that. Flip my brush over, right over top. Bang, look at that nice clean edge there. Now, when I get down here, what I can do is I can use the flat side of the brush Go straight out my piece. Now I'm over top of the duct tape there that I have there. I'm outside of the piece now. You see? What did you add to the black? I had just a touch of white okay. to thicken it up. Just a touch okay. of it. 
Not a whole bunch. All right. You can notice where if you look over in here, when I had too much, I moved, I moved whatever was on my brush over and added more black to it. It still wasn't going there. Then I took some of this that was on my brush, moved it over and then added more black to that. Now you see it went to the darkness that I want. Okay. See? And then now I just follow my edge all the way through. Even if it overlaps the cup a little bit, it's okay. I'm gonna bring the cup back. The important part is making sure I have that angle in there the way that I need it. Or I'm going to say it's more whimsical. Mm -hmm. You see? And I'm not worrying about it, making it feel like it's flat. I want to make it look more interesting visually. Mm -hmm. See, right to the edge of the cup, pull it in. Pull it in. You see? Pull it in. You see? Pull it out. In the same direction now. Now, the reason why I overdid all that blue that I did on there, because I want to show you how we did that blue on top of it. Mm -hmm. You see? So now you do the same thing. Either we start talking or you come back and you do your hair down. You can put it on heat if you want, but you don't have to. Okay. It's the air itself would do it to the touch. You see, and now I touched it, no black on my finger. It's dry, mm -hmm. you see? And that helps to move things faster. Now, with the black that I have on my brush, right? Mm -hmm. I take it and I come over here to the white area now, but I'm gonna put it here. And I'm gonna mix that black that was on here with my brush with a, with a scoop of white. You see that, Nadine? The scoop of white. Mm -hmm. With the a black lot that white. was already. Yeah, well, just one scoop of it, yeah. Not just a touch, a scoop. Just scoop it with your brush. Flip your brush over in it, mix it up. Now you should have a nice moderate gray or medium gray. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take a touch of blue and you wanna put that in. And now you're gonna have a blue gray or a Payne's gray. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, what you can do is you don't even have to wet your brush. What you do is you take your paper towel, right? Mm -hmm. And you wipe your brush off. Just wipe it, wipe it. It's, it's dry enough now. Now you mm -hmm. take a little bit more of the paint on your brush. You saw that I wiped the brush off, you see? Now mm -hmm. you can drag it through. And you're going to have that nice blue dry brush looking blue over top. Okay. See that? Okay. See what I did? I'm just yeah. dragging it right over top. Just the tip of the bristles at first. And then you start laying down the rest of the brush. But notice how it leaves that type of effect, like that blue is just being emanated over top. You see? Right. And if you look at your photograph, it's mimicking that. Okay. We're not trying to be perfect to it. We're just trying to mimic it as an expressionist. You know, can you go back and do those other things that are make it more closer to what you're seeing in the photograph? Yes, you can. But just remember, everybody, our main objective here is to get everybody to paint and draw along. Mm -hmm. So since we have to do that, we don't worry about, uh, how would you say, photorealist type of movements. We let you know what photorealism is. And every step of the way, I'll tell you where you can start, you know, beating yourself up. Because that's what I believe photorealists do, <laughs> beat themselves up. Right. So I'm trying to be an expressionist. An expressionist, we're all about loose movements, dots, dashes, drag along, scraping. You mm -hmm. see? Look at how that blue comes out. Even over here in this area, right at the edge, in the same direction that I put it in. You mm -hmm. should move in the same direction so it can feel like that table is there. You know, you can make a couple of looking like permanent lines in the middle there to show the planks. I forget how many planks is there, but you can just play with it and have fun. Who's really going to challenge you but Nadine when she sees your picture and says, that's not how that table looks. Oh, but Nadine uh, is not like that, though. Nadine no wouldn't way. do that. I wouldn't so, do that. Right. So then this way, nobody would be able to, to, how would you say, confirm whether or not your table looks like the table Nadine was on. It just looks like a table. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to get people to concern themselves with. Not that it's not exact to the picture just yet. Is it a table? Does it even look like a table? 
Does right. that look like a fence? I don't care if it's if it's that the edges are, are not like crisp and all of that. My thing is at first, can you make us believe each part of the piece? Mm -hmm. Did you make us believe the density of the trees up top of, or over top of the banister? Mm -hmm. Did you make us believe that the banister was in front of the trees? Mm -hmm. You see, these things are more important than likeness at first. Because I'm being honest, everybody, your likeness idea is going to come every time you do one. If you pay attention to how things are placed and, and moved around one another and what's overlapping what. If you do that, it's going to become easier and easier. So then when I say it's easy, everybody can say in unison one day, it is easy. <laughs> That's my hope that one day have a room full of people like that. And then they've all been around for a while. They can all finally say, yes, it is finally easy. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm working with with you, Nadine. Like finally, one, one day, finally, it's going to be like, yes, Don, it is easy. It is easy, Don. Yes, it is. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, that's where you want to be, man. And now, look, if you wanted to go further on this table, you can. Look at the picture. Pull the picture up. Yeah. Now, my whole mission and ambition is to get this cup in, and then we're pretty much done. If you want to embellish more, then you can, everybody. I'm not against that. You know, if you want to put more into your surface quality idea, then do so. Just know that if you go back into a certain area and it touches going forward, then just know you got to reestablish. So let me talk about what I mean by that. Say, for instance, you come back in because you want to rework some of the areas in here. Mm -hmm. All right. If you wanted to go back and do the bank side, then once you put those darks in, you got to come back and reestablish the tree back over top. If you don't, that house is going to look like it's part of the tree. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the lake. If you wanted to make higher reflections in the water in the lake and you mm -hmm. wanted to go back and put them in, you would have to put them in. And then as soon as you go and you start touching the edges or somewhere around here on this, on this banister, mm -hmm. you got to come back and reinforce the banister. So just know as a rule for yourself, if I go back into the piece, that means I got to do double the work. That means whatever area I want to enhance, I'll enhance it, but I got to do the overlap coming out of there too as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why when you see in some, some artist paintings, especially when it comes to landscapes or marine paintings and things like this, especially with trees, sometimes the sky effect doesn't look like you're looking through the trees. It'll look like this is on a tree because they went back to rework the area. Mm -hmm. You know, so an artist with a real good eye and a real good working process, they wouldn't do that. Or they have contingencies in, like I just suggested to you. A way to resolve that is always when you put something else down, you got to come back and reestablish whatever that area is over top. The minute you do that, you're golden. So let's go for this cup now. You see, what I would do is now I would go for a lighter gray. So now I would use that lighter gray that's already on there and just add more white to it. Even with the blue that's there, you see, add more white to that blue that's there. And now I have some nice reflections to go in on the cup. Now, if you already got your cup in, what you can do is you can do like how I'm doing, do some of the embellishments of the outside of that ceramic cup, you see? Leave some of the grays there, you see? The darkness is not. See, even in the other under in the inside of the cup here underneath the underneath the handle, mm. I'm gonna leave a little space and put a little bit of white there. You see, to be able to make it so that that's a shadow from the handle. You see, now that same light can be on the top here of the rim of the cup, covering where you put the banister. See, I'm still using the flat brush. Can you use a round brush for this? Yeah, that would probably be more of the proper thing to do. But if you're trying to be an expressionist, a lot of times, you know, Van Gogh would use the same brush for every effect. Mm -hmm. And then that helps you to have control, you know what I mean? So if you can have that type of control to use that flat brush, then use it, have fun. You see, put the lighter areas in, you know, and then now you would come back and you would put your high highlights in there, you 
You see? Make a nice crisp edge over here. You see? Just remember, if you wanted to move faster and you have an assembly line going, because sometimes when I do paintings like this, I do them as, as several different pieces. You know, I have several different ones together. Mm -hmm. So then I have another board with, you know, and so on and so forth. So I may have four boards with paper on it already ready to go. And I either have more four different easels or I'll just, when I get tired of doing this one here on the cup, I'll move this one aside, let it dry and then start, you know, go back to working on another one. See? Yeah. So then now I can come back with more white now, a higher white a higher value, a higher tint, and put that right on the brim. Mm -hmm. See? Y'all, shout right out to Cameron. He was uh, giving us ladies some support. Oh, okay. Thanks, Cameron. That's my family member there. Yeah. Yeah, he loves doing art. He loves watching me do art since we, you know, we've been talking. You mm -hmm. know, really good. I love him to death, man, my cousin. Oh, shout out to my cousin, Rob uh, Usher. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Robert Upshur. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry to, to bring it down a little bit, but I wanted to clap it up for him and have a moment for him. He uh, lost his uh, battle with pancreatic cancer. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, to hear that. So, yeah, so I want to give him a shout because he used to watch too, my cousin Rob, you know, oh. so I want to give him a shout out, everybody. Yeah. You know, and have him salute him going home. You uh, know? Yeah, my condolences and thank you. Celebrate thank you. his life. Yeah, uh, he survived by his son, Robert Jr., and my cousin, Schiller uh, Freeman Upshur. Okay. You know, so yeah, shout out to, to my family. Yeah. Shout out to my cousin once again. Yeah. And always thank you for your support, cuz. I love you and I'm with you. So yeah, there we go, everybody. You know, there's the deal. So then now look, we can put even a little bit of more light down here in the middle of the cup mm -hmm. to show that that's the highlight, the highest highlight area, you see? on the cup and I'm leaving mine's kind of chunky and stuff. So you can see the brush strokes in it. I like having fun. Now, if you're asking about the words on there, you can put the words on if you want. If you don't, you don't have to. Would you like to put the words in or at least the heart in, Nadine? Uh, put the heart in. Put the heart in, okay. Then I would say to you, pull out your round brush now, everybody. Pull out your round brush. See, notice how I'm still working with the higher highlights on the cup with the, the flat brush. Mm -hmm. And then notice how I'm moving slowly. I want you guys to see that. You want to move slowly when you're using a certain brush in a certain area because you're asking the brush to do a lot of work for you. you see, so I can use the corner of the, of the brush like that, like so, you see. So then now, look, I'm going to rinse my brush off. Now I have to dry that area off now. We're going to put letters in there. I'm going to dry that area. That's the importance of having a hair dryer. Maybe. That's the importance of having a hair dryer, everybody. That'll move the process forward. So then now, let's look real quick at the cup. See the cup, everybody? Yeah, so you see that heart that's on there? Yeah. I'm gonna use that design of the heart like that, you see? Opposed to doing the follow your heart. Now, if you wanted to really get that in there, you would. what you would do is when it's dry, you can take a, a 4H or a 6H pencil and draw in the lettering, mm -hmm. you see? And then come back and then use a, a, a flat, a round brush or a thin brush like we're about to use. We're about to use um, one of these micro brushes and it's not really micro, but it's close to it. You see that there? This is a synthetic round. So what I wanna do is I wanna take it, wet it a little bit, take that red, put that down Put a little water in it because that'll help to thin it down so it'll move it and flow better. Now they have something called a flow medium with acrylic paint that you can buy or you can use the um, aloe vera if you wanted to. That helps with flow and, 
and keeping the consistency of the paint. Because just know with acrylic paint, everybody, I may have to start saying this more, Nadine. Mm -hmm. As you add water to acrylic paint, it breaks it down, it weakens it. Right. And then in order to build it back up, you put the gloss mediums either in it or you uh, blast it at the end as a covering. Okay. Okay. So now that I have that paint that the way that I want it, I'm going to use my round brush that has a, a nice tip to it. You know what I mean? So it can help with flowing. You know, some round, round brushes are blunt on the tip. So you can make little dots real good with it. Others have a nice skinny tip. So you see the difference in the brushes. This one has the tip that I'm talking about. The one that I use to mix with has the blunt tip. That okay. makes dots better. So then uh -huh. if you look on my palette here, see how I can make dots better with this one? Because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's rounded at the tip, whereas this one is pointed to help with the flow, almost like a calligrapher's brush. So now I roll the brush in my fingers so I can have a nice point. I looked at that hard. I start the brush stroke at the bottom. Here, and up, thick, then back down and in, thin. First stroke, you see? Mm -hmm. Now I load my brush up again. From that one, and from that last spot that I just was at here, I place the brush there, do another thick movement, and then go into a thin. See, and then now when I got it there, now I can come back and play with it and clean up some of this stuff, you see. Now I can come back and make certain uh, areas a little bit thicker, you see? Because the heart is on the cup now. Mm -hmm. So now I come back in. Now I add another layer of red inside there. Let it dry, do it again, let it dry, do it again, until it gets to the temperature that I want, you see? And however you want it, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be what we call perfect again. You know, perfection is a lie, repetition is the truth, everybody. You see? Bada bing, bada boop. There's that heart. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. So then now to make it darker, you can add another a little touch of black or a touch of green to it. You see? You see, and then I make it darker. So I would go for the black in this one. That black mixture. And then now you come back in and Show us some of that movement inside there. Same thing going the other way. Swoop that way. Swoop that way, you see? Let's have fun with it. Uh, the way it was made on the cup, it looks like it was just one single brush stroke. Well, we're not going to worry about that, you see? Came back in the cup. Did my own embellishing the way I wanted to, you see? Can you see that the inside of the cup is darker? Yeah. You see, is my cup there? Yep. I'm happy with where my cup is. How it's looking in the scene. This is where you can embellish a little bit more and things like that if you wanted to. All that good stuff. Now, this is where we sign it, baby. So you can sign it with a black marker if you wanted to. I would. I'm, I'm going to sign mine with a black Sharpie. You know? Or another way of doing it is signing with your brush. That's up to you, you guys. But I'm going to use a Sharpie. And I'm going to use a micro Sharpie this time. Ooh. Yeah. So then this way, look, I'm going to turn mine on the side here. And I'm gonna sign it right in this little indiscriminate area, right on the banister, well, right in between the banister. Whoa. So you wanna do it small. You can just do an issue or you can do like how I do. I do a, a first initial and then I spell out my full, my full last name. You 
You see, and there it is, done deal. You see, done deal. There you have it, everybody, done deal. Cup is there, everything is there, banister is there. You know, is there other things you can do? Yeah, look at the photograph and see other things that you can snatch up and put in there. My main thing was in this session, or these three sessions, give you a basic understanding on how to use an approach to break down a photograph to be able to recreate it. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope everybody had fun with this, and I hope you can remember most of the ideas that we talked about on how to bring a landscape together from a place that you've gone and investigate that you enjoy to be able to paint it from a photograph and a digital photograph at that. Yep. Remember, we're looking at the screen to paint this. You're looking yep. at your PDA screen, or if you have a good printer, you can print it out. You know, if you got mm -hmm. an HP printer or an Epson printer at home or any one of those other compact uh, printers at home, you can print it out, print it out in full color, print it out in black and white. And then you have two tangible pieces you can look at that way. The main thing was is how to use your computer, how to use your full photographs in this new era with everything being digital. And I think I gave we gave everybody a good understanding on how to utilize those things. What you say, Nadine? I I agree. Yeah, you're looking good there too, Nadine. Way to go. Way Thank to go. you. Like the reason why I'm saying that is if, if you can feel it, like it seems like a scene that I can walk into from across the room, you got it. Right. It feels like I can walk up to that banister and snatch up the cup or look at you and say, where's my cup? Yeah. And you'd be like, man, look, I just got here, dog. I just, just, got, I just made my cup. Yeah, you better go on in there and get your own cup, buddy. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> all right, is the coffee made? Yeah, all right, cool. I got my cup. I'm going to go get my own cup. Forget you in your heart cup. Follow your heart. Whatever. You know what I mean? Uh. <laughs> Look at Nadine being all meticulous with the small brush now. Too much. Too much. All right, let me stop sharing the screen. There it is. Now we see Nadine. Look at her. All right, Nadine. Look at that wood, man. Yeah. Look at that table. How you feel, Nadine? Come on. How you I was feel? Working it. It was a it was a journey. I yeah. tell you, uh, getting used to uh, uh, the you know, using a dry brush. Yeah, these are things that I got to explain to you. You can see advantages of where you can use that dry brush idea. I would say in your cup, um, when you get your get a chance, we want to go with a little touches of pure white in the middle of your cup. Okay. On that bottom brim, with the brim, the rim of the cup that's closer to you, down mm -hmm. in between the heart a little bit. Here? Yeah, pure white. Yeah. You'll see why. And then let it dry. You got to let some of it dry. That's the only way the layers work for you too, maybe. Okay. So just work on your heart for now, like how you're doing. Then come back with those higher highlights in the cup. Got it. And then that'll help all of that stand out. You know, the blue-gray is what you want on your cup too, everybody, as far as the shadows are concerned. Mm -hmm. Anything that's white shows up with a, a blue gray in the shadows or a gray in the shadows of that item. Yep, you got it. Yeah, that's another one you can use too as a palette, aluminum foam on a on a piece of cardboard. Yeah, I I was just thinking about my brushes, but I, I then I thought about that. I was like, yeah, you could use that too. No, that's one of the things I use. That's just, you know, I didn't bring that up because a lot of times you can find this tempered glass or, you know what I mean, styrofoam, you know what I mean, which is the, you know, the styrofoam plates. That's a, that's a no brainer. A lot of times with the aluminum fall, I just tell people to take a back of a book or something that they're not using or take a, a loosely notebook and tear the back off that cardboard yeah. and use that cardboard with the aluminum fall to be stiff. So it's not as flimsy and things fall apart. You. Yeah, and you can go a little bit lighter on your table with the blue too, Nadine. Really? Because at yeah. first I, I was lighter, I thought, and then yeah, I went yeah. Well, just know, just remember that it dries forty percent darker acrylic does than what okay. you're seeing when it's wet. You know, and way to go, way to go. Looks good. 
Thank you. That's good. How's it feel to do it though? Your first real landscape. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, because you wanted to paint it, and now you see how you would paint that intricate stuff that you was worried about. Yeah, you know, the, the leaves in a tree. I was like, how do you do that? Now you see it's an overlap idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you overlap everything. You worry about certain areas first, and you come right over top. If you don't believe it, go back and look at Bob Ross, everybody. He does it all the time. Look at Bill Alexander. That's another guy that does paintings in real quick and fast in oil. There it is. You right. see, and they're, and they're doing the same overlaps that we do. And that mm-hmm. proves it. And once you do it, look at how that cup is jumping out of there, baby. You see how your cup is jumping out? Yeah. yeah. That's what we're talking about right there. In other words, we got it, everybody. We talked about palette. We talked about color. You know, we talked about the limited idea and the other colors. So if you notice, the secondary colors are there, which is what? Orange, green, and violet. Mm-hmm. Primary colors is there, which we have was red, yellow, and blue. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much how your sets look. That's why those colors are there. The only other color that we don't have up there today that we had last time was the brown. Right. And now you would see why your sets have brown in it. You see, mm-hmm. so generally speaking, these are the colors that you would have in your set. If mm-hmm. you buy a set, you would have black and white. You would have red, yellow, and blue. Mm-hmm. And then you would have orange, green, and violet. Mm-hmm. So you pretty much would have about seven to eight colors in your, in your idea or in your sets that you buy. Sometimes they omit out brown because they're knowing that you have these other seven colors of the rainbow. Mm-hmm. You see? So, yeah. You know, some sets, when you get more expensive, they don't even have black and white in it. You got to buy those uh, uh, extra because they're just trying to give you pure colors. Right. See everyone. So even the talking points that we're doing now while we're watching Nadine paint, it's very important to try to remember and listen to, you know, because it's always the understanding of the material along with your drawing abilities and your understanding of the color. Yeah. And just remember, you see in an additive way, meaning that light is adding together for you mm-hmm. to see it. And then you're translating it as a subtractive color. Subtractive meaning you're canceling out. You put taking two colors to put them together to cancel out to make one. Wow. You know, don't worry. Every week we're gonna go over it the same way again. The same way again. We'll talk it's about the color. Acid. That's the process. Yep, and then as a group, as long as I use the power of, of, of repetition or the power of reiterating things, like a tape recorder, it'll start to, how would you say, uh, it, infiltrate in. your world. Set in, infiltrate in your world, things like that. Way to go, Nadine. Uh, you see, so now we have it, you know. The thing you can put on the back when it totally dries is you can put down any of your experience that you have as notes on the back. Right. You see, so you know the day and everything that you did it and all that good stuff. If you know. Oh, you Be put myself, it on the back. Yeah, I, I put just my name on the front and I'll put dates and stuff and, and little notes on the back. So just in case you're selling it, a lot of people like to buy mem- memories like that of a piece. Mm-hmm. You may put it in the area where you were at, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You may put it, oh, studio work or photograph, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Things like this you put on the back. Mm-hmm. Some artists actually sign theirs on the back and everything, so you have to go through that. Uh, some shows that you may enter, they may require that you write the name and your name and the price and everything on the back of the piece. Oh, okay. You see? But you can just put your initials or your full name on the front. Normally mm-hmm. in indiscriminate areas along the corners, the lower corners, or the upper corners too as well, small and indiscreet. Or you can be bold. You can sign your name. Mine too way big? You want to. Nah, it's not too big. It's up to you. See, I explained all of that to let you know that it's up to you. Mm-hmm. When you're being photo real, you don't want your name to be seen. They do it real small and minute in the lower right-hand corner of the piece. Okay. That's a standard. Mm-hmm. But you technically can sign your piece anywhere you want to. Mm-hmm. Long as it's indiscreet and doesn't mess with the flow of the piece. Not unless that's your intent. Mm-hmm. 
Notice how there's still no wrong and right. What was your intent? Well, I want to be bold. Well, some artists sign it real big and in cursive along the bottom mm -hmm. and don't care if they're interrupting the piece. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to do that one when I was in college on Donald Stevens, D. Stevens, right across the bottom. <laughs> yeah. The professor was like, what are you doing? It's like, you don't have to prove nothing to me. I know it just feels good right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, Sign your name good. real big. Yeah, you just feel good. I, I did a good painting. Bang. You know what I mean? What you talking about? Sign my name big in lights. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so then after it dries, everybody, another thing you can do, you can spray it. You can spray it with this spray here. It's called. Uh, oh, I can't see you. Oh, yeah. I got to go back to sharing again. That's right. Hold on. Hold on. This here is called Kmar varnish. Okay. All right, you can spray it with that or my all time favorite, Rust-Oleum, two times ultra cover, gloss clear. You see it, this is the one you get in Home Depot. This is the one you get in Lowe's, everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's acrylic based, non-yellowing, fast drying, everybody, U UV resistant. So you can spray this puppy, I would say, be about eight inches away and spray horizontally, overlapping your stroke as you go down. And then if you need to do it again, you do it vertically. But a lot of times with two-time coat, all you need to do it is just once and it's two-time and it's gonna look beautiful in your acrylic. It's gonna bring all the colors up to the same height. Okay. And it's gonna make your piece explode even more. Okay. You see, so who knows? And one day we may have everybody send their work in that they've been doing from the classes, and we have like a small show somewhere. Yeah, why not? Yeah, maybe even in my hallway here, we send it all here, and we put it up on you know on slight easels and boards and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have a small show here with you know small food, and we're broadcasted live. Yeah, why not? And we'll have a, a let's paint and draw along pop up gallery show of all the works that we've done of the previous year. You know what I mean? Just to celebrate and things like that. Mm -hmm. Whomever that can make it, you know what I mean? You come on over to the studio or you can join us basically through Facebook by joining the, uh, the live stream and then pressing the picture where you can, you know, join like that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring people on that way. That's just a thought, Nadine. That's one of the- uh, It's a great thought. Yeah. Uh, now it's just a matter of who wants to be part of a gallery showing. Well, it'll be their first one, and that'd be cool, you know. Yeah. You know, or we can You're try to get a the... space. We can send out information to local libraries and stuff like that, maybe, and let them know what our cause is. Uh, let's paint and draw along and let them know about the Yandy uh, experience. Mm -hmm. It's not over yet for 50 and over, and then hopefully yeah. somebody will probably give us that. Or... Another one we can do is I can talk to one of the um, centers that, that has a hanging system mm -hmm. and see if they would be willing to sponsor a show uh, in conjunction with Let's Paint and Draw Along. Yeah. So we can have our participants bring, our, bring their work there and then have the participants of one of the centers, you know, put their work in and then combine it all together. You know, so we'll talk about that in the future, everybody. But other than that, we're pretty much done. It's going on 12 o'clock, everybody. All right. Thank Here you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Go. Yes, indeed. Um, so um, we hope to see you again real soon. Watch the rebroadcast. And, you know, repetition is key. Mm -hmm. um, enjoy this week coming up. Any questions? If you're interested in getting a t-shirt like this one. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Let me switch the camera to make it all. Well, you know, you can see the picture. Okay. So there it is. There you go. If you want to get a t-shirt like this, you can go over into the information section of our Facebook group. And there's a link there. There's also, I also put a link in the show notes. And so when you go to watch uh, rebroadcast, it should be at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get a shirt and just get the cup then. So you can have coffee. Get the cup. Yes. You know, it's nice to be able to have the cup. And yeah, there you go, Nadine. Yeah. 
Uh, nice plug, Nadine. We plugged that nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and really, this is because we are our, our mission is to get everyone to keep creating, having That's these right. moments of creative expression to get together. It, it's even much more fun. Even during um, these times, it's, it's more important to be together now. Yes, and that's why we're here. You can take a course. Yes, you can go online and take a course, sign up for a course and do that and have that kind of experience. This or you can come out to you. Abington and check out Don at Abington Art Center and have an art class with him, either your kids or yourself, and you can see the difference. But you would see the difference here, how it's more open and free yes. for yes. us to work together as a group. So we try right. to... 10,000 yes. people creating all along together. There you go. There you go. And so most importantly, you're, if you're interested in having more of an intense experience, a physical experience with Don live, go over to DonStevensArt.com. Yeah. There you will find all the information you need. You can reach out to him. You can take Email me, lessons. everything. You can find out where he is throughout the week if you're in the Philadelphia, New Jersey, Delaware region, region, you can come over and join other folks who are seniors out taking advantage of these locations and the fact that Don takes time out of his, his schedule mm -hmm. to inspire older right. adults. To yes. Well, I try to inspire everybody, 8 to 80. That's the whole 80s. philosophy. But I'm just focused, I was focusing together, on them. Right. He, Don trains. He, he instructs young kids, adults, older adults. Super adults. I've had people Super 95 adults. and over, 95 so years old that wanted to do art. Come on. You have no excuse, we're here. everybody. We're yeah. here to inspire you to keep creating whichever way you feel most comfortable. If it's yep. in a rebroadcast, watching a rebroadcast, all we ask is that you leave a comment in the comment section to let us know that what we are delivering is what you like to do. Right. And if you have any suggestions about leave things, them. leave them. We have a poll that's in the featured section to let us know what kind of art you like to do? Do you mm -hmm. like doing landscapes like this one? Man, I'm telling you, it was a journey, but I feel really good. This is an accomplishment for me. Yes. Oh, Nadine, I, not to interject, but in your pictures, now I saw a picture in your pictures that you took. There's a uh, picture that you took of a tree in the roots of the tree. Do you yeah. remember that picture? From of this the tree? location? Yes. Um, yeah, because I, I, you know, I did that because I like the way. Yes, that I already know that the roots of the tree, right? Mm -hmm. And how the tree bark and everything and how the background is there. I think that's our next landscape. All right. All right. That's, that's, that's why I brought so that up. One is about, uh, uh, what do you a call tree. it? Still life? Trees? No, no. It'd still be a landscape. Landscape? But it'd be of a tree. Of We're a focusing tree. on a tree. Okay. And I believe that's like an evergreen or a pine tree. Um, that's not a pine tree. I think that's an evergreen or something like it, or a spruce it might be. I had to look them up to figure out which tree. I know what a pine tree is. Oh, it's on the it's, it's the one where you put up all the pictures that you had on yeah, our on our page. I know. So if you go there, you'll see it because that's where I saw it and I put a like on it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because I, you know, I hadn't been back there since then. But um, and that's the that's the one because that one looked good. I was like, oh man, that's a nice picture. She don't even know how nice of a picture that one is. Right. Well, you know, I just started, you know, making those folders, and um, there you go. I'm telling you, you you'll you'll have a winner and don't even know you got a winner. Mm -hmm. That's a winner right there. That tree okay. picture. So I think that's the next one. Okay. You know, our okay. painting is going to be our landscape is going to be of. Explaining what a tree looks like in nature. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. And then using our, our additive style that we've been doing so far. Okay. You know, yeah. showing some other ways. Maybe, ooh, maybe we'll sneak in palette knife uh, movies with this one too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. So more of a roughness of, a, of the tree bark to show that thickness of the tree bark. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm sorry, everybody. That's a Virginia goodbye that we normally do. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were saying we, goodbye, and then now we started talking about another picture. We got a lot. We, we ran a whole bunch of stuff. So um, look around, see if you have any palette knives. If not, yeah, butter if knife, you don't have a palette knife, what? Butter knife, butter knife, fork, or spoon. And I'm going to show you that all next week. Butter knife. So it's the non-traditional, yeah. traditional way. We're going to show you how to use spoons, forks, and butter knives, even if it's the plastic ones. Wow. Pull them out. Okay. You know, this way you can look real good to your kids and your grandkids and, you know, things like that and other people. When everybody says, well, I have to use a palette knife. No, you don't. Where's your butter knife at? Where's your spoon at? Where's your fork mm-hmm. at? Okay, mm-hmm. then we can use those. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that goes with our theme of, I mean, I'm sorry, everybody, Virginia, goodbye and you, but that goes with our theme with using any and everything around you to create. Yeah. So there's no excuses. Yeah, I used to get beaten for using my mom's spatula, spoons and forks until mm-hmm. she designated them for me. Like she had, she went to the store, brought a couple for me and said, these are yours. That's it. That's don't, it. Don't, don't mess with my kitchen stuff no more, boy. All right. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, mama. All right now. And then now, you know, that's how I know how to use a spatula. That's how I know how to use a fork. Any size fork you can use. Is this the one? Yes, that's the one right there. Okay. That is the one. It's beautiful. We're just going to move the deck out of there and just deal with the tree. Okay. And that cloud in the back. Look how pleasant that feels. You know. Yeah, I mean? yeah. I saw that peaks yeah. of the water in the, yeah. in the marsh. Yeah, you see, see how the light is hitting up in here. Yeah, on that moss down there. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Look at the roughness in the roots and everything okay, else. Let me start at. Yep, that's the one right there, Nathan. That's the one. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, you can send it to me and, and send it, or I'll go and save it off the off of there and then put it on my laptop that way, uh-huh. however you want to do it. Man. Okay. <laughs> I think um, it'd be better if you just send it to me like you did last time or message. Right. Yeah, because there was actually um, there was actually another one. Um, and that'll be a third. That'll be a third landscape we do because we got more people that want landscapes, right? We got like forty six percent, if right. I remember correctly, that wanted landscape. And the next highest was what figure? Um, was that figure or was it um, um, still life? It may have been. I have I to look it. again. Just have to right. look again. But I know forty six percent. And standing was landscape. Uh, yeah, there was another one I saw. It was at like forty three percent. Can't remember 43%. exactly what. Yeah, I can't remember exactly which that one was. I don't know if it was figure oh. or it was still life because I know still life was low. Ooh, Nadine. Yo, isn't that sick? Look at that picture. Ooh. There is so much, so much you can have fun with with that. Look at the blue greens and grays in there, and look at yep. the sand color. Yep. Oh yeah, that'll be the next one after that. Yep. Okay. We can we can chalk that off probably on that on that left side, like right after that little tree that's in the background. This one. Yeah, after it. Yeah, on after the right it. side, okay. of, right side of it, or on the left side if you want to keep it in the scene, we can chop it there. Just to have that there. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's tight. Yeah, that's another one. You talking about bring it over to yeah, right about right there. there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What you think? Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Done. Oh, gotta be a beautiful one. We can kill that. All righty. All right. So the next one is gonna be the other tree. And then the the, the two or three sessions after that, it'll be this scene here. Oh, yeah. look at the one with the water. Which the one? The one with the fencing. This one, yeah. This oh, one. Oh, Nadine, you was getting it in. This is what I mean, Nadine. This was near uh, the volcano. In, oh, uh, look at the mist, Nadine. Yeah, Shit, I know. Man. <laughs> Damn, Nadine, look at that scene, man. I might want to use that for one of my classes, uh, you know, for coming up. Because we work from photographs, too. Oh, okay. Hell yeah, Nadine. I just print them out in black and white and we do drawings of them and stuff. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, okay. and then at the end of it, then I give them an option to um, 
be able to paint it. Shit, Nadine, that could be the next one after the gray one. Yeah. That takes us right uh -huh. into true fall. Then we'll be right around October then. Right. If we look at doing two or three sessions each one. Yep. Uh, let me what see. What you think? What you think about that, Nadine? Uh, yeah, let's go for it. All right. And then we'll uh, go back. And then that. after that, then we'll look at what we have probably after the, not the next one with the tree, but the next one, the gray one. We'll look into to see what the uh, survey is saying to see what the next heaviest one was. And then we'll pick pictures for that or whatever you have. I'll go through my pictures too. And we'll, we'll go the same way. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. This one is for Don. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That's look, that look, it looks like a painting that I would want to paint. Like you can paint those real quick and fast, you see, uh -huh. to have as a series. Right. You know, then once you get real observant, you can change things based upon how you feel about the scene, based upon I'm gonna have I'm going to have you losing your mind. Oh, no, no. Oh, shit, man. Damn. <laughs> Sorry for the language, Nadine, but that, oh, man, come on. Well, I'm glad we started talking about bringing up pictures. Oh, oh, Let me go oh, back. that's a palette knife all day. Yeah. That's a palette knife painting all day. That other one with the mountain. Yeah. Oh, Nadine. See the clouds? That's, that's yes, the Nadine. Yeah, oh, yeah, you took some beautiful pictures. Yeah. Beautiful pictures, Nadine. Oh, look at that cliff. Oh, but that one there. That one there, yeah. And this one. Sheesh, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Ooh, they did. Man, hey. if I was there, you wouldn't have been able to pull me away. Like, nah, we got to paint this, y'all. I know. There was a I don't care where you're standing. Look, oh, damn, Nadine. Yep. You got a nice, you got a nice collection, Nadine. Yep. You got a nice collection. Yeah, and that's so, the way. Oh, Nadine, you you oh, you you know messed up now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know. Oh, look at that one with the guy sitting there. Yep. All right, let's stop there, Nadine, before I start <laughs> picking again. We're gonna have to put the, put that one in too, Nadine. Okay. Yeah, we it, might have it, to do that one too. It is in the folder. It is. Okay, in the we, folder, we, we got to do that one too, Nadine. I'm getting so excited, like a kid in a candy shop. You hear me? That. If you can see, if you can see me right now, Nadine, I'd be smiling from ear to ear right now. You'd be like, "Oh my mm -hmm. god, yeah, that's how serious this is." The, to create, I get like a big kid, like, "Oh my god, did you see that?" Mm -hmm. I have to go and walk away and calm down sometimes. Like right now, I'm just too hype right now. Like, ah, oh. beautiful pictures, though, Nadine. Way to go. Way to All go. All right. Well, uh, everyone, that was a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, we were still on, my We were still on. Oh, it was a bonus. Man. It's what happens after we finish our session. Wow, we, I'm we, sorry we, for we the cursing, talk. everybody. Wow. Oh. So, so that's a teaser of what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So if you're listening to this to the very end, you know what's coming up. All right. Um, so oh, Nadine, most, that's dirty, man. I didn't know it, you were still the one. You got me. Good, though. It's good, I though. thought good you knew. You know, no, I wasn't. I told you I got so excited. I'm not paying attention to the screen. I'm just rattling the mouth off and looking at the pictures. Like, oh my god, look at that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So look, everybody. Just, I'm sorry for the cursing, but I get excited. And she took some really good pictures on her vacation. Thank you, Nadine, for the next couple of classes. Done deal, everybody, for our content creator. There you go. All right, everybody. Thank you. We hope to see you again real soon. I'm going to stop the record. Please and keep the comments, creating. The comments, comment section. And please keep, keep creating. creating. Yeah. Take care, everybody. All right.